Ja. Ah. Ah! I have a bad feeling about this. Bastard. Something elsewhere. Elusive. Don't center on your anxieties, Obi-Wan. Keep your concentration here and now where it belongs. But Master... Hello there. This video is about some of the things I have learned while teaching about balancing work and life. Especially for new teachers out there, you may feel obliged to spend extra hours grading. I had a helicopter parent who once told me that I was the teacher. My job is grading. But you need to know that not only are teachers overworked and underpaid, no one is paying you to spend extra time of your own at home grading. If you're working 40 hours a week extra at home, you're giving away 40 hours of your life away for free. It was never nine to five, is it? It's kind of like going to the grocery store and then waiting forever in the self-checkout line so that you can do your own checkout and your own bagging. Flashback. My first experience teaching was as a ski and snowboard instructor. Students enjoyed learning to ski and snowboard as much as I enjoyed teaching them. When the day was done, I went back to the ski lodge and kicked back with dinner and movies. No grading. When I began teaching in Egypt, however, I quickly discovered that teaching students who paid to be on a ski slope was vastly different from teaching in a classroom full of students who just wanted to play soccer outside. Unless something was being graded, my students wouldn't do the work assigned. So, being a complete rookie, I tried to grade everything. Then one time I missed a chance to tour the stepped pyramids in Saqqara because I had to get all this work graded. I cannot teach him. The boy has no sense. That was the first instance of my learning about work-life balance. No lesson prep or grading is more important than a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. End of flashback. I had a talk with my son about his memories of high school. He mostly remembered having too much work and teachers taking too long to grade and return things. What about you? You got homework? Yeah, but I'm doing it in the you... green room between, you know. He also remembered that I spent all of my evenings doing schoolwork and grading. So I asked him how long I should have been spending for each student, and he told me no more than five minutes. I pointed out to him that with a typical 100 student caseload, that would mean 500 minutes just for one assignment. Over eight hours. Eight hours later. Even if I hit my target of one to two minutes per student, that would still be over three hours for any one assignment, and I would be only giving them the most cursory of comments or suggestions. Perhaps you think you're being treated unfairly? So, for classwork, this is the ultimatum I now give myself. If it doesn't have a rubric, it's not getting graded. I may put a check mark on it and return it, but that's it. If you are feeling tempted to add extra comments or suggestions to such work, you may do so, but be mindful of the extra time you're taking. Their choice. This is the sort of thing where I would expect to be uh, helping kids with it as they work together with their classmates, um, guiding the discussion, or otherwise just evaluating their participation, not so much attempting to be assessing this. If it does have a rubric, then it must be embedded in the classwork itself so that my students can see how to do the work and what the right answer is. You might find that students are a bit dubious about having the right answer in front of them all the time, but I just explain to them that it's how they get the right answer that matters, not the right answer itself. This has the additional virtue of being exactly true. I no longer schedule homework as such. Homework is usually whatever classwork wasn't completed in class. Any assignment that can be completed at home 
falls into one of two categories. Okay. If it doesn't have a rubric, it's not getting graded. Nice and stable. If it has a rubric, it must be smart. Simple, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time limited. Okay, you might need to have somebody... Ooh. So if you recognize yourself in any of the above, the next time you have a pile of paper to take home, for grading or other work, I suggest you do this instead. Put it in a drawer in your classroom. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. It's especially educational on long weekends and vacations. Remember, no one at school is going to care how many hours you put in at home to do the work. But your family will, and they will remember. So, take care of yourself. But Master Yoda said I should be mindful of the future. But not at the expense of the moment. Be mindful. So, if you have any questions or comments for me, please leave them in the comments section below. If you liked any of the material or would like to see more of my teaching material, again, just check down, down below for the links to all of my resources. And if you want to help me be making more videos, be sure to hit that subscribe. Ah! and all the other stuff, you know what to do.